This week on Colombia's most extreme PhD, watch Bianca try to juggle a myriad of things in her plate while failing splendidly at all of them. Let's walk with her through a typical day. Here we see her in her natural habitat, making drip coffee while staring aimlessly out the window, failing to recognize that her optimal brew time passed, creating an unfavorable cup. What a pity. Well, it seems like she's decided to finally be productive and get ready for the day. Here she is leaving the house doing God knows what because you can't have a consistent schedule in a PhD. Excessive productivity planners and aesthetic day in the life video creators are probably dropping like flies hearing that statement. But when your life is dependent on experimental time courses, which could take 20 minutes or 20 hours of intermittent or consistent work, it's kind of hard to plan for a typical day. Things change all the time, which means I have to be very flexible and I can't really put a time and place to particular tasks, which means that I fail spectacularly at using everyday planners. And ask my friends and they'll tell you that I am the first to buy an aesthetic planner just because it's cute, it has like little frillies things and all these other stuff and it's like ultimately customizable. Or I even made my own bullet journals following all of those tutorials and I spent hours and hours doing them but I still never got around to using it after a month. A week later it's collecting dust and I'm still living each day based on what tasks and meetings my brain just happens to remember that day. May not be the best method but hey, it's gotta be this far, right? But not everyone has the luxury of consistent days where you can keep to a schedule. Some days I don't go into lab, while other days I stay until midnight. How can I plan for a consistent sleep and wake time schedule if those are my hours? You can't. You just kind of play life by ear, which if you watch some of my early videos is a pretty different sentiment. And while I worked in a biotech company, even though I still worked in the lab, days were more predictable. Work-life balance is a thing that people actually try to respect, unlike academic work. We love modern day indentured servitude. <laughs> And thus, it was easy to make a schedule to fit my goals in life. I woke up at 5 a.m. I studied for three to four hours before work. I went to work, came back, studied a bit more, and either hung out with friends or had some precious alone time. And now that type of life is not really feasible. And to be honest, looking back at when I did have that consistent schedule, it wasn't really sustainable in the long term. So what do I do instead? I let my brain and body decide what works for that particular day. I had a late night last night in the lab. I'm just gonna sleep in the next day. I have to read five papers for class and lab. I'll do less studying today and push some of it off for tomorrow. And no joke, for one of my classes, the professor sent us a Dropbox file linking I think 12 different files. I don't think all of them are papers, but papers, explanations, PowerPoints, just for one class on statistical significance and why most papers are actually falsely advertised. Oh my gosh, today is a free day. Let me see if I have the mental capacity to actually make it very productive. Or if my head hurts, I'll just take it as a day off and allow myself to relax, chill, and recharge for the next day. When my mind is on, I work on whatever is most important. When my mind is off, I stop. The only things that I plan for are what are the most important things to get done that day? What's a non-negotiable? And what can be pushed off to tomorrow? And nowadays, I only really use calendars for meetings because I've forgotten about a few meetings recently, which is not the best, but that's what works for me. And what works for you could be completely different. This day in the life may not seem as efficient and productive as my old 5 a.m. day in the life, but it helps me keep on track when my brain is both functioning and on its last brain cell. It also reminds me that resting is important, especially in this world where any time that is not productive is seen as laziness. So without further ado, here's a realistic view of a sometimes typical day in the life of a neuroscience PhD student at Columbia. The time that I wake up is variable, but what is consistent is that it takes me way too long to actually get out of bed. And whether it's 5 a.m. or 10 a.m., my brain must doom scroll for at least 30 minutes before I manage to get up. I first boil some water using my really nice fellow electric stag kettle up to around 205 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Fellow, please sponsor me. I spent so much money on your products. And while that's heating up, I take a shower and get ready. You have to multitask where you can, am I right? You know what I got time to wait for your water to boil and with the Fellow Stag EKG electric kettle, you don't have to. You can set the precise temperature to what you want, set it and forget it, and then come back for your optimal brew temperature. See, Fellow, I could totally do sponsorships for you if you want. Bianca, no one is sponsoring you right now, so get back to the point. With my hair wet, my clothes on, it's time to make some coffee. Today we're going for a medium roast from George Howell that I smuggled in from Boston, but I threw it the bag so I can't exactly tell you what it is. I believe it had notes of chocolate and caramel and nutmeg, but realistically all of these coffee notes, they all taste the same to me except for warm versus bright. If you guys want a coffee video, let me know. With my coffee made, I go to my desk and contemplate what I need to do for the day. And yes, I really do sit like that, stare off into space, drink my coffee, and think about what I need to get done for the day. So let's take a quick peek at what thoughts are going on inside my head, inside out style. So we have to change media on our organizer today, which should take around 30 minutes, but I need to make media and then wait for the components to thaw, so that'll take another 30 to 45 minutes, let's say an hour for safekeeping, but I need to get that done by 11 because then I have to go back to campus for class and it'll take me 30 minutes to commute. So two hours should be enough, so then I'll get to lab at nine, but then I don't have anything else to do after lab, so then I'll come home after class, get some industry work done, and that'll take two hours. So then I got two hours to finish my next grade of reader, and then another two hours to do some reading, and then I'll eat whenever I have a free spot. Once my internal monologue is finished, I get changed into my big girl clothes, put on some makeup, pack my bag, head out for the day, and do everything my inner monologue told me to do. Coffee break! I can't do midday work without a midday coffee treat. And then I get ready for bed and that's it. The next day will probably look different. Maybe I'll have way more lab work and be on my feet for 10 hours. And that's unfortunately not an exaggeration. Lab life do be, do be like that. Ooh, lab life do be like that sometimes. So when I get home, I won't feel like doing anything besides becoming a little cocoon on my bed and that's fine. Just take life one day at a time and we'll get everything important done when we get to it. We'll accomplish our goals when we get to it. And maybe the productivity people on YouTube don't really like that, but at least we won't be husks of people at the end of it. And we can live both a happy and productive life. Next video teaser. Answer this question in the comments below. What in the world am I talking about when I say dimples equals alcohol nests? Okay, bye.